Hi! A few people asked me to post a guide about the pumpkin farm I built in my last Let's Play episode, and sure, why not? It will be a short guide, even though it might seem like a complicated farm, it really isn't. The farm combines two different ideas. Idea number one is from El Mango, and it is idea for a pumpkin farm that works with a flying machine that pushes around hopper mine carts that break the pumpkins, the pumpkins fall into the hopper mine carts, and then we park the hopper mine carts on top of hoppers that unload them. And the second part is a tethered flying machine, which is my concept for attempting to make a farm that is unload safe. More on that later. Uh, we have farmland here along five rows, and then we have four rows of dirt in between. I found this to be, well, I want to say that this is the most efficient for this type of farm, but that would be a lie. The only reason it's like that because this is as wide as we can make the flying machine, and this is the most that we can fit. Along here we have slabs that are waterlogged, and we have jack-o'-lanterns on top of them to give light in the middle of the farm. But just for good measure we surround everything with jack-o'-lanterns to provide a lot of light in the farm, except in the middle where we have shroom lights, just so it's lit up and nothing can spawn in here, because when things spawn in here and walk around it can interfere with the hopper minecarts. The difference from my previous tethered flying machine designs is the clock, because I believe I have now finally found a clock that does not break on unloading, because if you have followed my updates on the flying machines, there were still issues. Even though the flying machine is self-repairing and it does not really get stuck, but it still loses efficiency when it breaks. But now I do believe that the clock is unload safe. Uh, at least I have not been able to break this kind of clock in a lot and a lot of unload testing. The clock is just two droppers pointing into each other. One of the droppers has one item and there is a comparator here, comparator here, and repeaters on three ticks going into these blocks which power the droppers. And that gives us the perfect delay on the signal that goes into these repeaters which are all on two ticks and then the observers are looking into the repeaters and they power the shroom lights which is why they have to be shroom lights. You can't use for example sea lanterns because sea lanterns don't conduct redstone signals. Yes this has been a issue with other machines I've designed where people switched out lights from shroom lights into sea lanterns. Don't do that unless you know that a light will work, but if not, if you don't know that, use shroom lights, that might be one of the problems. And then we have just tons and tons of repeaters here which are powering the tethered flying machine. This is what I call the tether. Now the activation mechanism is a little bit, maybe, complicated-ish looking, but what it actually is, is just... This note block will make this observer react, which will make this piston pull, push the block into place, which enables the clock. These blocks are all you need if you want to run the farrow manually and don't care about running it automatically. The rest is a mechanism that allows it to run automatically, relatively reliably. And as we can see, the tethered flying machines are moving relatively slowly, because we're not in a hurry. The hopper minecarts are breaking the pumpkins, and they are picking them up. And eventually, when we reach the end, the tethered flying machine will turn around. And at the end, these hopper minecarts park on these hoppers and get unloaded. Now, if you want to run this machine automatically, you can just switch it on here. And what will happen here is that first we have a slight delay, which is this clock. It doesn't really matter how long the delay is. I have 32 items here. You can measure how many items you actually need. It might not need that many at all, because the main mechanism that is holding this machine stopped is when there are items flowing through this hopper. So as long as we're unloading the pumpkins, 
this comparator will give off a signal which will keep this piston up and the machine restarts only when this observer goes down and sends a signal here. That allows us enough time to unload everything so we're not running around with full hopper minecarts. The only complicated part when building this machine is placing the minecarts correctly. So as you can see there are iron bars under the honey blocks here and we need to get the minecarts stuck inside the iron bars. The easiest way I found to do this is to just place a rail here, hop a minecart here, break the rail and start the machine. That's it. As soon as the hopper minecart hits a pumpkin, it gets pushed into the iron bar and it's now stuck there forever. You of course need to do this for every minecart that's here. Other than that, everything should be very obvious from the world download. Now, let's deal with the elephant in the room. Is this farm unload safe? The answer is maybe. Unfortunately, there is an issue. And the problem is, and I cannot claim that I do fully understand it, there might be a problem when the machine is running in uh, semi-loaded chunks, so not entity processing chunks, uh, because I have seen the minecarts get unstuck and then pushed around uh, by the iron bars incorrectly, which causes lots of problems, including the minecarts knocking over the plants and destroying some of them. Not all of them. I cannot really explain this because I don't know enough about chunks being loaded and unloaded, but I have observed this, so I guess I'll give you a warning. The flying machine itself does not break, but the minecarts can get unstuck. The rates of this farm, of course, depend on how long you build it. You don't have to build it this long, or you can build it pretty much twice as long, and you should be fine. This current farm, which will be in the world download, is 116 blocks long. Do not ask me why it's 116 blocks long, because that was just a random choice. And it produces uh, somewhere between 3.5-3.8 thousand pumpkins per hour when run continuously. I will not give you a block-by-block -block tutorial because it's pretty unnecessary. Everything should be very clear from the world download. Like I said, the only thing that is slightly complicated is how to place the minecarts in. These repeaters all have to be on two ticks. Just one item here. And the number of items here doesn't really matter. Just have 32 as I do, or maybe a full stack, or maybe just remove this clock entirely because it's not strictly necessary. You should Definitely test this in your own creative world to see what rates you get, how big you build it, and how it performs for you. You can also replace the pumpkins with melons, but as you can see, uh, you cannot make the farm as big as the pumpkin farm, because melons generate more items when they break, and as we can see here, the hopper minecarts get full. So you probably need to make the farm shorter, I haven't done any proper testing for how big it can get. Potentially, if you're running it in continuous mode, it might be able to keep up with a farm this long, but now I just let all the melons grow out, and as you can see, the minecarts couldn't pick up things starting from about here and here. It's just filled with melon slices. I have not tested this too much. This does work. It's not a big problem, but uh, you need to figure out the rates and how long you can safely make this before you will run into issues with too many items lying around. Also, since there is so many more melon slices than pumpkins, the loot system might not be able to keep up with a larger farm, so keep that in mind. But that should be it for this short showcase. I will have links in the description to the world download here and a video explaining what the tethered flying machine is about. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments and I'll answer anything I understand. 
But otherwise, thanks for watching and have good pumpkins. Bye.